What's going on everyone, Austin John please here, and today I'm going to be going over how you can get the Zonite armor in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. There are going to be three pieces of Zonite armor that I highly recommend that you get. I already got one, which is going to be the helm, and I hinted at where another one was in a previous video, so if you've been following along, you may have already found them. First of all, the helm is going to be located here at Lightcast Island. All of the locations that we're going to be going to are somewhat high up in the sky. So here at the Tabantha Sky Archipelago, if you have the Traveler's Medallion, you could go ahead and plop a Traveler Medallion on top of here after speaking to Stuart, and then you could just travel back here. And then you're going to make your way the long distance over here to the Tabantha Sky Archipelago to the Gano Shrine. Up here is going to be two levels of cold, and then it's also going to be a low atmosphere area, so you're gonna be able to do these crazy jumps, which I'm a big fan of. Excuse me a moment while I go activate this dispenser. This one also has mirrors inside of it, which you may need in order to get this piece of armor, so you may wanna go ahead and get it. Now, if we head north, that's the island that we have to go to. If you currently have a Zonai contraption that you could whip out with auto build to get over there, go for it. But if not, we're just gonna look straight north over there, there's going to be a flux construct, but over here is going to be a whole bunch of supplies that we can actually use in order to get over there a lot easier. That being four fans, there's a couple batteries on here on a platform with a control stick and a whole lot more batteries, so might as well, you know, go grab those. These batteries are going to last us a long time, and we're going to make our way over to that island up there. This is going to be Lightcast Island, and if you look straight ahead, here is going to be a dragon portal. Go ahead, interact with that and that's going to go ahead and cast some light into this hole down here. Oh, it's a Korok puzzle. I need that. Every time that you come back here and all of the fauna has respawned, be sure to grab your ancient Aracuda, but also there's going to be four hardy bass here. Cook all those up one at a time, and that's going to be a full recovery plus temporary heart, so 10 out of 10 recommend. Once you make your way in here, you're going to be seeing a mirror that's going to be right over on the side. All you have to do is take this and rotate it to reach the other mirror that's going to be located right over here. Repeat this again and make this mirror shine to the next one. Repeat this a third time. And your fourth time, you're going to be focusing it over toward that mirror on the ceiling. Inside of here is a construct that you need to take down. He's either going to be holding a mirror or a mirror shield. Now you're going to take this and focus it toward that gem and activate it. I've already done this. And right up on top of here is going to be the chest that's going to be containing the Zonite helm. Our next piece of Zonite armor requires you to make your way over here to the Zonite Forge Island, which is also very high up in the sky. There are two ways to get here, one from the South Lanayru Sky Archipelago. You could do the same trick because this is going to be another skydive challenge. You come up here, drop a travel medallion and make your way all the way over here. Or you just stop short a little bit and land on this island and then there's going to be a platform with rockets that takes you right over, no problem. This takes about three and a half to four rings of stamina with Tullin, so it's going to be a very long drive. Or from the North Nekluda Sky Archipelago, if you already have the Zora armor, you can coast very easily over here, which is a waterfall, and then come on over here. At the Zonite Forge Island, you're going to be interacting with this hand figure, and then you're going to do some fans that come up, and then you're going to be landing down here. After you land down here, there's going to be a shrine for you to activate, but most importantly, we're going to be focusing on this right here, this structure right next to the shrine. From here, you're going to have to make a platform. I'm going to choose to grab out a fire hydrant, because golly, I really don't use them for anything in this game. So I'm going to grab this fire hydrant. I'm going to move it over to the lava. We're just going to go ahead, hop on top, use Ascend. And inside of here is going to be the chest that we need for the Zonai Waist Guard, our second piece of Zonai armor. Our next location that we need to go to is going to be at the Wrist Peninsula over here, just northeast of Tarrytown. If you look at the Wrist Peninsula, you're going to be seeing this little bit of the Sokala Sky Archipelago, and there's going to be a shrine located up here. It's not very hard to reach. 
On top of here is actually going to be a shrine that requires you to bring a gem down from this mining island up here that I can't focus on, but it's up there, trust me. But we actually need to go to that big Death Star looking thing over there. All you need to do is come over here and activate this hand thing. By the way, quick little pro tip, if you already did this entire puzzle and you did the shrine, in order to get back up there and actually get this Zonite armor, you can interact with this dragon portal for a second time or just, you know, going forward. And then that's going to reactivate all of these pushers. Because of that, I actually got caught up on this for quite a little while, almost a shame to admit. The first one, we don't have to move at all. It's just gonna bring us exactly where we need to go right onto this platform and perfect opportunity in case you want to get some rocket shields. I still need one. So now we're gonna be moving the big old spinner that way the pusher is focusing toward the middle of that island. Rotate this pusher, and then we're going to take this on up here. Upon landing up here, you're going to be seeing that there's going to be a rocket platform up here. We're going to be rotating the pusher once again to aim directly at that floating platform. There's a construct on there who's going to be shooting rocket arrows at you, but that's not really a bother because we're going to be taking one of these very many heavy blocks right next to us, putting it on top of the pusher, and that's going to uh, take care of that platform for us. Sure is. We're now just going to grab a second block, put it on top of the pusher, focus on its destination. That's not its destination. I actually didn't want it to go to that island. We want to land right in that hole of the big Death Star looking thing. We'll rotate this once again and watch the trajectory of our big block. Hole in one, perfect. There is a slight chance that you will actually activate the switch that you need to from this platform when it was shot up here. Probably not. So we're gonna go ahead and make our way inside. Oh, it was so close. All right, we're just gonna take this and put this on this weighted platform right now. And that's going to start the ball spinning and I have a blood moon right now, if you'd excuse me. From here, if you look around at this sort of sundial pattern, that's actually going to be the hole that you can enter into the lower area and that's what we have to do. So we're gonna climb on top of one of these pillars and we're gonna be using a scent to get on out. Now would be a pretty good idea to put down a save in case you need one. And then if you climb to the very top, one of these sides is going to be an open hole. Specifically which one? If you're standing at the top and there's this one raised platform, it's to the foot of this raised platform. You notice how one side's a little bit smaller, one side's a little bit wider. This is the bottom, and it's gonna be over here. I would recommend making your way ahead of what's going to be the bottom, and you're gonna float off, and then you need to float back inside. It can be a little tricky to do. You may wanna put down a save point or a travel medallion, that way you can make your way inside safely. And once you get in here, open up this chest. And these are the Zonite Shin Guards. The Zonite armor is very unique that it gives you energy up for all of the Zonite devices that you're going to be powering. How much? I actually don't know. Let's go test that. In order to test that, I took out these four different types of emitters for different types of weapons, and I'm going to activate it and see how long it takes for my battery to run out. Exactly 70 seconds with Zonite level three. By the way, I just put out a video on how you can extend your battery quickly and efficiently in this game. Now we're just gonna test with two pieces, one piece and zero pieces. Well, these results were pretty interesting. It doesn't really follow any of the other armor stat buffs from my baseline, which is just no clothing whatsoever. This lasted 35 seconds. With one piece of clothing, I got an additional 25%. With two pieces, it was 50%. And with three pieces, it was an additional 100%. Three pieces on, you will double your duration of your battery. With two pieces, you'll get an additional 50%, and with one piece, quarter percent. So it makes a lot of sense to always equip all three pieces. Unlike other things that we've seen, like snow quill armor, there's no point in, a, in putting the second piece on unless you want the third set bonus, which is unfreezable. But when it comes to this, yeah, no, 100% of the time, you want all three pieces active. Let's talk about upgrades. For level one is going to be very easy to do. You just need regular soldier construct horns, five for each of the three pieces. Level two is going to require five soldier construct two horns and then also five captain construct one horns. Okay, so you're gonna need to find congregations 
of Zonai constructs that have their captain present. And then if you're in the later game, you need to find ones that aren't scaling. It's a shame that when you enter those shrines that take away all your stuff, you can't like keep those drops. Level three is gonna require you to have soldier three horns and captain two horns, five of each and large zonite, okay. And then level four, which I do not have the materials for, is gonna require soldier four horns and captain three horns, five of each and 10 large zonite. Okay, so you're gonna need what? 45 large zonai to upgrade everything and 15 of every single horn excluding captain four horns This is this is pricey. This is gonna be a little grindy to do That means that the large zonai is gonna be needed for the zonai series the three elemental series the ember charge frostbites as well as the minor and the of the depths you're gonna need a lot of large zonai Okay, as far as the set bonus, you're gonna get energy recharge up. Well, okay, now I need to go test how long it takes for me to run out of duration of something and how long it takes for me to, you know, get that energy back. So that took 3.9 seconds with no armor on. And that was including from me doing the actual button input, which is swinging my sword. So I don't know, maybe it was three seconds. And that was two seconds. I mean, way too short of a sample size to actually know the difference, but it's somewhere between 50% or more. So yeah, having it recharge is kind of neat, I guess, but mostly just having all three pieces for that double duration, that's pretty fantastic. What was the full base defense value of a level four? 28. Is that on par with my barbarian? No, it's stronger than the barbarian, okay. So yeah, that's some, that's some really defensive armor. So that fully maxed out is the equivalent to having 21 hearts of defense. That's pretty great, dude. At least we have something to use with all those uh, soldier horns because I'm not using any soldier horns for weapons and the only captain weapons that I'm using for horns are captain four horns. Now I have something to do with the captain one, two, and threes. The large Zonite is gonna be a little bit of a slog though. All right guys, well let me know what you think about the Zonite helm, waist guard, shin guard full armor set leave a comment down below if you think that uh you're gonna be getting this honestly i see this as a mid to late game kind of armor but it was shown off in the trailer so wanted to show it off to you now great guys thank you so much for being here if you found this video helpful do me a favor hit the thumbs up button down below if you're new to the channel consider subscribing turning on notifications until next time austin john out